Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Assetto Corsa Competizione Track Guide series. Today we head to one of the most brutal and rewarding racetracks on the planet, which is of course Mount Panorama in Bathurst. This place doesn't really need an introduction. All I will say is that for sim racers, this is arguably the ultimate driving challenge. If you can conquer this place, you can probably conquer just about anywhere else. For this episode, we've gone with the Honda NSX, which is generally an unpopular choice in ACC because of its lack of outright pace. However, at Mount Panorama, this car comes to life, and will often be found right at the sharp end. It sounds good too, and it's more predictable than many of its rivals, a very important attribute for this place in particular. So with that in mind, let's jump into the analysis. As you approach Hell Corner, keep the car to the right and start braking about halfway between the 100m and 50m boards. Shift down to second and turn in, aiming for a mid-corner apex. You can roll off the brake as you get closer to the apex to help get the nose in, and you want to position the left-hand front wheel just on the edge of the stripey kerb. Get in the power as early as you can, opening up the steering and using all of the kerb on the corner exit. The exit speed here is the most important aspect as the run up the mountain straight is very long, with the possibility for slipstreaming and overtaking opportunities. Drift back over to the left as you head up Mountain Street. For Quarry Bend, you need to brake at the end of the tarmac access road on the left. Change down to third and trail brake into the corner, aiming to get the nose of the car in nice and early. If you can roll into the corner right on that white line, the camber should hold you in and allow you to get on the power immediately. Don't be afraid to let the car run out all the way to the wall in the exit, as you can gain huge amounts of speed by doing so. It's a very satisfying corner when you hook it up. Shift back to the right of the circuit approaching the cutting. This section is particularly tricky to get comfortable with and does need a good bit of practice to master. You want to turn in just as you pass the gap in the wall, lifting off the throttle slightly in most cars in order to stabilise things for the braking zone. Get close to the wall on the inside, straighten up your steering and get right on the brakes, shifting down to second gear. Roll off the brakes as you get close to the corner, turn in and let the uphill and camber slow the car down and hold it in for the apex. Hug the wall and get on the power midway through the corner. Run out as much as you need to, but try and move a tiny bit back towards the left before Griffin's Mount immediately after. Put two wheels on the inside kerb, and supposing your line is right, you should be able to keep full throttle applied without hitting the wall on the exit. Reed Park comes up very quickly and you need to turn in nice and early, around about as you pass the tree on the left. Aim to put your right front wheel over the white line, but be wary of the kerb as it can be a little bit bumpy. You might need to ease off the throttle slightly on entry to this corner, just to avoid understeer and maintain your speed all the way through. Make sure you're fully back of the power over the exit, and use the kerb as well. When going for a sub 2 minute lap, I can almost guarantee you that you will hit the wall on the left at some stage, so just practice it. Run back to the right, watch the grass on the edge of the road and keep it fully pinned through the kink. Run out so that the right hand wheels are using the extra tarmac beyond the white line. Turn in for Solomon Park just before the grass starts, lifting a tiny bit if required and aiming for the white line on the left. You can use a tiny bit of kerb if your car allows, but any more than that and you'll be bounced, resulting in a fairly hefty crash. You really don't have small accidents at Mount Panorama. On the exit, you will end up using that stripey kerb and running very close to the wall, but that's exactly where you want to be. Stay to the right from McPhillamy Park all the way until you mount the stripey kerb as you're about to crest the hill. Turn in here, again, slightly feathering the throttle if you need to in order to avoid understeer. You're aiming to hit the stripey kerb reasonably late on in this corner. Run out and use the exit kerb as required. Move back to the left quickly to prepare for the daunting skyline section. Start turning right slightly and brake just before the overhead banner. Change down to 4th, keep your steering wheel as straight and smooth as you can while still turning around the corner the necessary amount. As you prepare to change direction for the S's, you can use a little touch of throttle to steady the car. Start braking again hard as you turn left. Grab 3rd gear and aim to use all of the kerbs on the inside. Thankfully these particular kerbs don't bite at all, and cutting here properly is crucial to straightening the section, getting slowed down appropriately and keeping the car stable. Whilst going over this kerb you can lift off the brake slightly but as soon as you're over it, get back on them again hard and straighten the wheel again, shifting to second. Turn into the right-hander, aiming for a kind of mini double apex. Get your right wheels over the kerb on entry, let the car ease out a tiny bit and then get back towards that same right-hand inside kerb on the exit. This will give you the best line for the dipper. Switch direction quickly, dab the brakes again to help get the nose in left, coast the car through the apex using all of the tarmac up to the wall and then get straight back on the power. You might be wondering if you have time to breathe yet. I certainly am recording this narration anyway. And the answer is no. The exit of the dipper becomes the apex for the next right-hander, so use the kerbs on the right on full power. Run out to the wall on the exit, but try and drag the car back over to the right slightly. This will give you a better angle for the left-hand kink, through which you want to keep the car fully to the left, again using all of the road beyond the white line and up to the wall. On the exit, you should be over that line, giving you a nice open angle into the right-hander. Change up to fourth and lift slightly, aiming to keep the car as right as possible throughout the corner. 
If you do this correctly, you should be able to straighten up the car just before you head over the slight crest, giving you a nice straight braking zone for Force Elbow. Brake immediately, keeping the car nice and straight and change down to second. Try not to turn in too sharply too early, as you want to hit the late apex here. However, don't let the car run in too deep or wide either. Try to go in just right of the inside white line, still on the brakes. Roll off the brake as you start taking the corner, increasing steering angle to get the rotation, and cut back for the late apex. Put your left front on the white line and get the power down nice and early when it grips up. Open up the steering and get close to the wall and exit. Now we can all finally take a breather. I would argue that from quarry to forest elbow is one of the most epic sections of circuit anywhere on the globe, but it's also extremely technical, challenging and requires full commitment. Don't expect to get it right straight away and just focus on improving one corner at a time. The glory of sim racing is you can smash every wall 10 times with no injuries to yourself or your bank account. The entry to the chase is flat out, take it from the left hand side in order to straighten out the braking zone. Break halfway between the 150 and 100 meter boards, changing down to second. As you turn in, roll off the brake and carry the speed through the entry, aiming for a mid-corner apex. You can use a little bit of curb on the inside, but too much will unsettle the car. Get in the power as soon as you pass this point, using the exit curb and shifting up to third. Keep the car pinned through the right and use the exit curb again on the left. Drift over to the right from Murray's corner, braking at the 100 board and as straight as possible. Turn in as the grass on the right ends, rolling off the brake for another mid-corner apex. Kiss the white line and get back on the power as you do so. You can use the slightly bagged exit curb and stay right for the short blast down the pit straight. And that concludes our lap of the breathtaking Mount Panorama. Now let's play it for you at full speed. So there we have it. It might take you longer to get fully up to speed at Bathurst than it will at most tracks, so I'd always recommend building your speed up slowly. Work on one corner at a time and try to bang in the valid laps rather than pushing to the limits immediately. It will get frustrating very quickly. As long as you're smooth and precise, the lap time will come with experience and it will be incredibly rewarding when it does. Just before I sign off, here is my 10 second summary of Mount Panorama. On the power earlier of hell, bend, keep it tight through quarry, be neat and tidy through the cutting and keep the speed up into Reed Park. Focus on lines and smoothness on top of the mountain and watch for understeer. Brake power, brake coast, brake lift, brake power through skyline, be patient at forest elbow, carry the speed through the chase and don't break yourself into Murray's. Thanks as always for watching. If you love this circuit as much as I do, or disagree with everything I'm saying, be sure to let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Traction channel for more racing game content like this. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching and have a great day.